Welcome to the Pope on Film. I'm Bunny Williams. And I am the Pope in question, Reverend Steve of the Church of Edward. Glad to be here. <laughs> and I just want to say I'm so happy that you are listening to this podcast. I'm so happy that that you're you're sitting somewhere listening to this. Maybe you're at the gym or you're at home strangling your wife and I'm just so happy that you're listening. I wish I could be there giving you an awkward massage as as thanks. <laughs> you know? Thank you for listening is what I'm, I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say thank you for listening. An and, awkward massage. That would be with peanut butter, right? You know what? That'd be a really good band name. Awkward massage. Awkward massage. That would be a that would be a good band name. Yeah, I'm coming up with like a band name a day, just from yeah, various but conversations. But that's my new one, Awkward Massage. Band name, I called it right here, Awkward Massage. <laughs> what is the new one you've been coming up with? Huh? Um, oh, God, what? just just everywhere. I just I hear anything, and I, I just try and pay attention to conversations. And people will say... Like uh, like today at story time, I did a story time for the kids, and a girl said, um, I've got a snippet of coffee in here. Just a snippet. And and okay. just, that's, that's my band name right there, Snippet. That was my band name for most of today, was Snippet. <laughs> it's going to be like a, like a art, like prog sort of a band. But, but now, a snippet of coffee, that just shows me that the English language truly is dying. Yeah. Snippet. I just like yeah. the fact that there are like six and seven year olds out there that are using the word snippet. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Yeah. You might be using it wrong, but still, good try. Some <laughs> applause good. for you. What is a six year old doing with coffee? I, he, she didn't have coffee. She just had a snippet of it. She just had a snippet of it. <laughs> she just had a snippet of coffee. Just, just a snippet. That's not a big amount, I imagine. Whatever a snippet is, I'm not sure I what would, measurement would, that is. I would think it would be a, it would be very small. A snippet, a snippet, not like a plethora, you know. Yeah. Just a snippet. Hey, can I talk about something for a little bit? Sure. Uh, because I'm 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 sitting here, I've got my laptop in front of me, and my laptop has a um, a wonderful background featuring a bunch of different Marvel comic book characters, and I'm really really impressed with what Marvel has done c creating their cinematic universe. Um, I'm a big big fan of all of their movies. When I was a kid growing up, I I would be given five dollars. And I'd be sent to the comic book store to get whatever I wanted. And I realized that I could buy some new comic books or I could buy three times as many old comic books uh -huh. because those were a lot cheaper. So I grew up in my, the 80s reading a lot of comics from the 60s and 70s. I read a lot of the um, the the re-releases of the the – the horror comic books like the Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror yeah, and the Crypt of Fear. I grew up loving those, and I read a lot of old Avengers and a lot of old Spider-Mans, and I remember as a kid reading those thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if they did a movie of this? But I also <laughs> thought it would never happen because mm -hmm. there's so much – backstory to that. There's so many different characters. So that be, oh, well, they'll never get to this. They'll never be I, able to do an Avengers movie. Yeah. I didn't come across comic books until I was, like, much older. So, like, I, like, immediately fell into the collector's mode kind of thing, which... Mm. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Um, but because of that, some of the things I really got into collecting were... Uh, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, yeah, Captain Marvel, yeah, ooh, a couple of others I can't think of. Spider Man, definitely. 
Captain Marvel and he had those bands and he would put them together and he would yeah and then I hear he's Jones. a woman now he's he's back and he's a woman I heard yeah there's a lot of gender bending happening right now yeah like right now Thor is a woman but Thor is a woman in the same way that professional wrestlers and boxers retire with finger quotes right so Thor is a woman for now. Just like and sure, I really retiring, sure, for the tenth time. Okay, great. I want to find out about in in the eighties. Ooh, I want to say this was like eighty five. Doctor Strange had a had a decent run of a plot line, and at the end of it, Marvel printed a certificate in the book saying that vampires will never, ever exist in the Marvel Universe again. <laughs> and I hear that's been broken. <laughs> like, sometime in 2000, they did, Marvel did a, a, a run of comic books called The End, where Thanos just destroyed the entire Marvel Universe, and just everybody died, and it was just Thanos, but he got lonely, and he realized that the only way to bring this universe back is if he died, and the 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 thing was, was that, okay, but here's the rule. If I die, I can't come back to life. In fact, no one can come back to life. This will be the end of a character dying, then coming back to life, and then dying and coming back right. again. This will be it from here on out. If you die, you die. And I believe Thanos stayed dead for about a year or two and came right <laughs> back to life. Yeah. But the thing that yeah. I'm worried about is when I first heard that the, that the next DC Comics movie was going to be Superman versus Batman, I got really excited. Yeah. Because this is a good plot line. This is a strong plot line. This is something that that is is really good that you can make a really good movie on. But now they're shoving a whole bunch of other superheroes in that movie so that they can make a quick and easy jump to making a Justice League movie. And I'm excited about seeing a Justice League movie, but suddenly Superman versus Batman is being watered down by Oh, Wonder Woman and Flash and Green Lantern mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Cyborg and maybe Aquaman. And, and the way that I think that this is, is is that it's as if Iron Man 2 also had the movies Thor and uh, Thor 2 and Iron Man 3 yeah. and That's one of the whole uh, movies in there. And yeah. Captain America, and then they immediately went to the Avengers. I'm also worried that See, all of the the DC movies are just too gritty. They're just too dark and mm -hmm. too serious, and just you know, I don't go to see a, a Marvel or a DC comic book movie to be depressed. I'm worried that's where DC is going. Yeah. They might be just trying to bank on that that their their characters, not that they're more popular, they're more in the public conscience. You know, yeah. you don't have to explain to people who Superman is or Wonder Woman or anything like that. Where Marvel, who really knew who Iron Man was? Yeah, I remember before that first Iron Man movie came along, I remember reading articles and seeing stories where people were saying, "Ooh, a big risk. People don't know. People don't people don't know who Iron Man is. Who knows who uh -huh. Iron Man is? They're calling him like a third string, a third tier character that is not as popular. And now he's like a member of the Holy Trinity as far as Marvel's concerned. Oh yeah. Well, as far as the comic books actually went, he he was he was high up there as well. You know, but again, the public consciousness and having to introduce a character and get his backstory down and all that. I I don't think you have to do that with, like, The Flash. Yeah. You know, he runs quick. That's about all we need to know. 
I started watching the TV show Flash that just premiered. Um, I've never watched that show Arrow that's yeah. on TV. I've never seen that, although everyone who I've heard who has seen it says that it's just the absolute best and I have to watch it. And eventually I will, but I started watching Flash and it's it's pretty darn good. Yeah. And another good review for that show is my three-year-old is obsessed with it. <laughs> like, I'm not exactly sure if Maxwell knew who the Flash was, but after he saw that, he just, he he's the Flash now. And he puts his hands, he puts his hands straight while he's running, like he's running super fast. And he makes, yeah. elec- he makes electricity noises, like, <laughs> Daddy, I Flash. I flash, Daddy. He's obsessed with that show. It's pretty darn good. I'll give it a thumbs up. But I'm not exactly sure about... Yeah, Talking about DC movies, I'm just going to say it. I miss Christopher Reeve. Yeah? I miss yeah, him, Superman. Yeah, that's going back there. I, I miss George. <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I've that's seen going back those. there. I really like those animated Supermans that they did to the Max Fleischer. Max Is Fleischer, that who did yeah. those? Yeah, those uh-huh. classic Superman cartoons. Really love those. And you know what? Uh, what's the name of the guy who did the Joker last and then he died? Heath Ledger? Oh, Heath Ledger, yeah. He did an amazing job. He did a good uh-huh. Joker. But my Joker... And and they're doing this right now in the comic books. My Joker isn't a sadistic serial killer. My right. Joker is hiding in the abandoned theme park, the abandoned fair, in the abandoned like uh, fun house, and he has a uh, fake flower that shoots water in your face. My Joker is more like a. Person? My Joker is more like a like a Romero Caesar Romero Joker. We're going to have to see, man, because the, the Joker now in the movies is kind of evolving where I don't know if we're ever going to see the same Joker twice. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Jack Nicholson did a great fucking job as the Joker. He you did. Know, he was also a bit closer to the Cesar Romero with a Jack spin on it. Um, Heath Ledger took that to a whole – well, Heath Ledger and the writers. Let's, you know – he 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 gave a brilliant performance, but you know the stuff still had to be written for him. <laughs> you know, yeah. he did an amazing an amazing job with that character. I absolutely love it. But the next Joker who comes along can't do that. Yeah, you know, it, it would be you know, it, he would just be doing a Heath Ledger or a Jack Nicholson or a Cesar Romero impersonation. Yeah. So I kind of want to see where they take that Joker next. That's a good point. I never thought of that. That's really going to start evolving. I wonder when we're going to see the next Joker. I really didn't like that last Uh, Batman movie. I'm going to come out and say it. I did Uh, not like that last last Batman movie. I didn't see that one. I haven't heard anything very good about it. So... Some people liked it. Okay. I don't know. I'm I'm not so into Batman that I'm going to go too terribly far out of my way. Dark Knight yeah. was awesome. Oh yeah, that that's an amazing movie. Really amazing movie. I mean, well, the main character seems interesting. You know which one I love? I love yeah. Batman and Robin. I fucking nipples and all, man. I love Batman and Robin. Oh, that, God, movie that movie is a throwback just... to the Adam West movie, the Adam West show. It, it was ridiculous. It was great. That movie is just insane. Now that's that's <laughs> that's I I'm a big fan of Batman Forever. Yeah, this Val Kilmer one, isn't it? Yeah, I think Val Kilmer did a really yeah. good job. And I think that was the first one where they're saying, okay, none of this, uh, like, Frank Miller dark crap. We're going to go back to uh, Bert, to, to, to 
Adam West, Burt Ward, we're going to do that. We're going to be cheesy and over the top. And here, Tommy Lee Jones, overact as much as you want. We've got this silly guy named Jim Carrey who's just going to be Jim Carrey throughout the movie. And it's, it's a lot of fun. That's a good one, too. Yeah. I, I, I do yeah. like that one as well. Not as when much I, when as I, Batman and Robin. <laughs> when I first saw Batman and Robin, there, it, I just... Right before the movie ran, I just, like, turned to my friends and said, okay, let's count how many cold puns Arnold Schwarzenegger does. And yeah. we got into, like, the 30s before we lost count. <laughs> he just does so many. I did the same thing with Rocky Five. Like, my friends, we were in the theater, and I said, let's count how many times Sylvester Stallone says the word yo. And then after, uh-huh. like, 40... You just completely lose track, <laughs> especially in Rocky Five, because there's one specific scene where, like, a uh, uh, uncle, uh, like Paulie or whatever, he comes down as Santa Claus, and instead of saying ho ho ho, he says yo yo yo, and then Rocky says yo yo yo. It's not yo yo yo, it's ho ho ho, and he says, well, I say yo yo yo, and it's like, oh God, why did we even think of this? If this was a drinking game, we would be dead. We would be Ooh. dead corpses. <laughs> <laughs> but that last, that last, uh, Batman and Robin, oh, God, what an amazing movie. Oh. Alicia Silverstone killed the Batman I, I hadn't, movies. Yeah. I, I hadn't seen it in years, and it came up on Netflix a couple of years ago. It hasn't been back since from what I've seen. And I put it on, I watched it, and, like, right from the opening scene where they jump out of the planes with the snowboards. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. Okay, you got me. <laughs> and that's that's right this. there with uh in Batman Forever, the one part that gets me is when um Robin takes the Batmobile out and he gets confronted by the sinister black light makeup gang. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Ooh no, it's the black light makeup gang. They're about as tough uh-huh. as like something from West Side story. Ooh. What Robin, out? Yeah. Have- Robin's gonna Robin's Robin's about to get his ass kicked by the solar babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other day, movie? oh my god. The other day, yeah. I thought, I thought, well, Maxwell, you know, he's he likes Batman movies, he likes Batman cartoons and stuff. I'll put on that first Tim Burton Batman movie, and I'll put it on for him, yeah. and we'll see what he what he thinks of it. Number one. It was a lot more violent than I thought, than I remember it being. Like Joker killing someone, Joker killing all these people, Joker talking to a Uh corpse. I mean, it was darker than I thought. And number two, it was a lot worse than I remember. Maybe it's because I was younger when I watched it, but I... The, there were like I think Michael Keaton does a good job, but there's a scene in which Vicky Vale wakes up in the middle of the night and sees Bruce Wayne sleeping upside down from the ceiling like a bat. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Uh-huh. Like Spider Man doesn't like Peter Parker doesn't shoot webs out of his butt and like sleeps in a corner of the room in a web. <laughs> It's just absolutely ridiculous. Wait, you're having Bruce Wayne sleep like a bat? Did Tim Burton read any of these comic books? Did he know what he was doing when he made this movie? It it was worse than I thought, but God, Jack Nicholson. Guy's amazing. Guy's absolutely amazing. he He did a very good Joker. But also at the time, Tim Burton was really kind of fresh with that whole gothic kind of look that he brought to film. It, it's just kind of a shame that it was like his one trick and he's done it to death now. Yeah. Although Pee-wee's Big Adventure is just such an amazing movie. Yes, it is. It's really wonderful. Yes, it and it, it It's just incredible. And then, and then going back large, to the... Large. Yeah. Going back to, like, the, the skiing guys in Batman and Robin and the Blacklight gang in Batman Forever, in the second Batman movie, Batman Returns, it's the circus gang. 
And that whole beginning, it's the circus characters. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderfully cheesy. I don't mm-hmm. like, I really don't like Batman Returns because that set a dangerous precedent of, okay, it's going to be two villains from here on out in in, in comic book movies. If there's going to yeah. be a sequel to a comic book movie, it has to be two villains, and that's it. I was really disappointed with uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because I thought the third one was – the first one was a pretty good movie. But then you have to fall into that Batman Returns archetype and have two villains, three villains, or how many villains you can shove into one movie. I was quite disappointed by that. Quite upset. I, I always get a little nervous when I start hearing that they're putting a lot of characters in. You know, that's a lot to write. That's a lot to try to explain, you know. And it often gets sloppy. So so Batman Returns, I mean, you know, and what was up with Catwoman? You know, villain or not or whatever. I, yeah. I, I hated I hated the cat suit, and I was really looking forward to seeing Michelle Pfeiffer in a cat suit. Yeah. You know? And it was. Did you stitch that together yourself? You really can't sew, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Just big uh, hunks of bread holding the ears on and and stuff like that. It was like, and they made Michelle Pfeiffer just look so unattractive, which I I didn't think yeah. that was really possible. <laughs> yeah. I have an idea for a Marvel movie. And it's the greatest Marvel idea ever. And if any Marvel executives are listening to this podcast, then they should shoot me an email because I have the greatest Marvel movie idea. Go for it. Um, My favorite comic book – I read a lot of kiddie comic books when I was growing up. I read a lot of whatever weird, bizarre thing I could get my hands on. I read a lot of, like, Uh what if – which Marvel did, like what if yeah. Doctor Doom was a good guy, what if the Fantastic Four had different powers, stuff like that. I read a lot what of their silly Conan books. Was a <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite. Yeah. I right. And I, I read just whatever weird comic books I could find, and I became obsessed. I bought the first issue of Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Ham. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it was it, it was it was a kiddie comic book, but it was just filled with puns, and it was it was fairly true to Spider Man. It was Peter Porker. He was a photographer for the Daily Beagle and J. Jonah Jackal, and he was dating Mary Jane Water Buffalo. Uh, his his aunt was Aunt Mayfly, uh-huh. and he 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 fought uh, Doctor Doom and Doctor Ostrich, and uh, there were filled with so many puns, and in the back there would always be a, a, a short comic story of a different character, like the X Bugs or Goose Rider. Right. And so, <laughs> my idea for a Marvel movie, I think it's a blockbuster, is to make a Spider Ham movie animated and make it a parody of all of that Tobey Maguire crap. <laughs> yeah. Because I yeah. think the time uh, has passed enough that we can make fun of of those movies, especially that third one, because I think we're all still a bit upset over the third Spider-Man movie. Uh, I I totally forgot it. That's like how much it affected me. Yeah. You know. Didn't but if if anyone is out there, if anyone is out there who works for Marvel or Disney and is hearing this podcast hit me up because my script for Spider-Ham is huge. Well, I'm <laughs> estimating opening weekend three bajillion dollars. That's just a rough estimate. That might be a record breaker. Yeah, that might be a record breaker. It might be a record breaker. It's going to be right up there with some of the biggest movies like uh, Deep Throat. Deep Throat, and yeah. others, And others. So what movie are we talking marketing. about? What movie are we talking about this week? We are talking about APE. I think it's pronounced APE. 
I think it's pronounced A P E. It's it's an American and South Korean movie. It came out in 1976, I think, at least according to Wikipedia. Originally, it it was called The Great Counterattack of King Kong. That was like the working title. But it was being rushed into production because Dino De Laurentiis was making his big 1970s King Kong remake starring the dude. Uh, I I kind of meant to look that up. I had a suspicion that that was the case because we have a director character named Dino, and I found that really kind of suspicious. Yeah. No, uh, Dino De Laurentiis, he was making a big, huge uh, fuss over his King Kong remake, and so a group of South Koreans and a group of shady Americans said, well, let's make a, a, a big, giant ape movie as quick as we can and as cheaply as we can. Let's make it 3D so that people will go and see it, and let's try and rush it into theaters before King Kong comes out. And so King Kong right. sued, like Dino De Laurentiis and his people sued the makers of The Great Counterattack of King Kong and said, well, you can't call it that because people might confuse it with King Kong. So they based their name off of another popular movie at the time, which was MASH. Which right. was technically, which was technically M asterisk A asterisk S asterisk H. So this movie is technically A asterisk P asterisk E, and the subtitle is not to be confused with King Kong. And it's <laughs> such it's such a bad movie that this should be in a perfect world. This should be right up there with uh, the Room and Birdemic, and all of those other movies that people automatically assume are the worst movies of all time. Like, people still to this day automatically assume that Plan 9 from Outer Space is the worst movie of all time because society and the right. media and, and everybody just kind of assumes that, but those people have never seen A asterisk, P asterisk, E asterisk, because this is just, <laughs> like, remarkably bad. It is amazingly bad. It's like jaw droppingly bad. This is one was of those there movies. A plot? Was there a plot? Yes, Joanna Kearns from Growing Pains stars in it, and she's some sort of an actress, and she gets kidnapped by the giant horny gorilla. This film was re released in 1982 as like a grindhouse movie, and they gave it the title. Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla, which I like so much more than A asterisk, P asterisk, E asterisk, semicolon, not to be confused with King Kong. I like Attack of the mm-hmm. Giant Horny Gorilla a lot more. It was also renamed Hideous <laughs> Mutant, but I like uh-huh. Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla more. But uh, Joanna Kearns from Growing Pains gets kidnapped by the Giant Horny Gorilla, and the military tries to he keeps trying to kill the ape and the thing that i like about this movie is that it has to have the one big dramatic end line just like king kong because king kong right. had twas beauty killed the beast and this movie had he was just too big for a small world like ours <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is one of those movies that was specifically created to capitalize on 3d and 3D was fairly newish at the time. Not too newish, but maybe it was hitting another revival. I don't know. But when I think of 3D movies, I think of I'm still not used to 3D movies. Maybe it's because I have glasses. That's it, part of it. I, I would not. I don't. My eyes don't really see 3D very well, so I try to avoid them. Yeah. Like, I have glasses. Even when I have contacts, watching a 3D movie to this day is still a bit weird. Like, I went to go see the new Godzilla movie, and I saw it in IMAX 3D, and I was super excited, and I got the best seat, and it just made me sick. It just just gave me motion sickness, the big screen and the 3D, and I was just like, I really want to see this movie, but if I – I was literally thinking this. Like, this is a good movie, and I'm seeing it the first showing, the day it came out. Now, if I vomited into my popcorn, 
Mm-hmm. Will anyone else notice? Yeah. And that's not that's not a conversation you want to be having with your own brain inside of a movie. <laughs> but when I think of 3D, I still think of like old cheesy 3D. The, when I think of a 3D movie, the first thing I think of is uh, Vincent Price, The House of Wax. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And the reason I think of that is because of the paddleboard scene. Do you remember the paddleboard scene? I don't remember that. I know I've seen the movie a few times. It's, I don't remember a paddleboard it, it, scene. It was the first big 3D movie to, released by, to be released by a major theater. Like, some movies have had been released in 3D before then, like uh, Robot Monster, which was hideous, and The Bubble Machine. But it, House of Wax, <laughs> it was a 3D movie, and it, near the middle of the movie, for no reason whatsoever other than the fact that they're gratuitously using 3D, they're, they're reopening the House of Wax, and uh-huh. they've hired a guy in a in like a like a tux and a top hat top hat and tails to entertain people going into the house of wax by hitting a paddleboard just a just a dollar paddleboard you see at a dollar store or at Walmart or in front of a in front of a Target in their bargain bin just a board and a ball but because it's 3D he spends what seems like 10 minutes shooting it into the camera yeah, <laughs> and it's just, just the most gratuitous 3D scene. Like I think of like those old SCTV skits where they're doing something uh, in 3D and and they keep showing it into the camera, like do 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 do. And that was the House of Wax, and that was 3D to me—a guy shooting a paddle ball into the screen. Like, I saw a movie that my kids forced me to watch, some animated movie, and it was uh, Monsters vs. Aliens. And it was yeah. a really cute movie because it made a lot of references to, like, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon and the blob. But in the first scene of the movie, there's a guy shooting a paddle ball into the, into the screen. And I thought, <laughs> ooh, hey, this is a 3D movie, and they're doing House of Wax, and how wonderful. I love that. Kids, I can't explain this to you because it'll be like five minutes. But, but it, it, like the paddle ball scene, House of Wax, it's a very gratuitous movie. And I would say with this movie, Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla, about half of the movie is gratuitous 3D shots. <laughs> like the same guy shooting an arrow into the screen 20 times. Uh-huh. Yeah. The same bad special effects over and over again, about 50 times into the movie. This is 3D. Let me throw this into the camera. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. What did uh-huh. you think of this movie? Uh, I found it entertaining. I found it completely horrible. Um, <laughs> they had no idea of what forced perspective, forced perspective is which would have helped a lot of the shots a lot, but no, they just generally went with, hey, we'll just shoot the monkey down and he'll look big, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like um, the first scene, the first scene is like, okay, I understand what you're doing here. You want it to be a boat in the ocean, and I'm supposed to pretend that this isn't a model in a bathtub, which right. it clearly is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, in what universe, only this universe, do you evacuate people from the small village into the big city? <laughs> That's a wonderful thought. Was there not going to be enough debris? <laughs> That's a good point. Now the the thing yeah. that the, the thing that's that's really the trailer for this movie is. It's in broken English, and it says, See giant gorilla fight great white shark. See see giant gorilla fight jaws. See gorilla fight giant snake. And it it makes such a big deal about those two specific scenes. In the poster, you see this giant shark just shooting out in 3D, because, again, this movie wants to just make 
just cash in on anything popular and Jaws. So the they made a big point in the trailer and in the posters of see the giant ape fight a shark. And it does seem as if at some point in time that shark was alive. Yes. But it but wasn't clearly when not it, there. Yeah. And also the ape costume. Could you see the t-shirt of the man underneath the ape? I don't know if I ever noticed the t-shirt. I definitely noticed, I mean, there was no hiding that. There was no seam. The top flap just kind of flapped over the rest <laughs> of the body, too. It's my theory that this movie is so, so horribly bad that, like I I was saying in the beginning, this movie this movie deserves to be seen by everyone and to be seen at midnight showings, to be seen as like the absolute worst movie of all time, because it is one of the worst movies of all time, but not too many people know this movie, and I think it's because whoever owns the rights or owned the rights to this has really been sitting on this movie. For instance, I this is a movie, and again, I I think I said this in the first episode or the second episode, but it 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 came from Hollywood from the uh-huh. 80s. It, this movie was shown in that film. They show the scene yeah. where the ape actually flips off the audience for no reason whatsoever. Yes, that they, was yeah. classic. Oh my that god! Was absolutely it, classic, and this movie with big points for that scene by itself. You can tell that, it, like, they probably knew that they were making shit, so they were kind of having fun with it. There are a number of scenes where there are Korean extras and they're running away, and they're supposed to be fleeing in terror, terror, but they're def they definitely have huge smiles on their faces. Yeah. It's definitely like like a like like they at least they had fun making this movie that they probably knew was going to be horrible. But I wanted to see this movie. I really wanted to see this movie, and I looked for it. And for the longest time, it wasn't on YouTube. You couldn't you know torrent this movie. You couldn't download it anywhere. It was available nowhere. But there was a DVD available, and I bought it for about. $35. And that's a crazy price to pay for a DVD. That was the cheapest I found the DVD. New. Mm-hmm. It wasn't used. It wasn't like it was out of print. It was still being made. That was the cover price of the DVD. And I honestly feel that this movie is so bad that it's been hidden from the world for a really long time. <laughs> but it's currently available on YouTube. And it is out there. Just be sure to search for a asterisk p asterisk e asterisk but it is out there and everyone it needs is to now it. on our playlist it, the everyone movie playlist needs at undead film undead yeah. count film on youtube yeah and I'll, I'll i'll put it on my blog because everyone needs to see Definitely. this film get get your friends together get some beers and this is just it's so it's it's fun it's fun in that you can't believe it was made. <laughs> Don't forget your story, dude. Oh, God. Do I have to tell the story? You you got to tell the story. <laughs> oh, okay. Did, did I put it on my blog at one point in time? I think I did. I don't, I don't know if you put it on your blog or if it was just a Facebook thing. I don't. I, I, I bought the DVD. And it was around my birthday because I bought it for a birthday gift for myself. I felt really guilty about spending a large amount of money on what I knew was going to be a horrible, horrible film. But I bought it and I watched it. And then on the day of my birthday, I I posted on Facebook. It's like, I'm watching the worst movie of all time. It's called A asterisk P asterisk E, and everyone should see it. It's the worst film. And there's a scene in the film, and it's really bizarre, but Joanna Kearns plays an actress in the movie, and she's being raped in some scene. And the director goes, cut, cut, cut. It's like, hey, you need to rape her gently. And the actor goes, rape her gently? What the hell are you talking about? It's a goddamn rape scene. 
and they have this big <laughs> argument about how should I rape her? And I, uh-huh. in my mind, I thought this scene is just a perfect representation of how horrible this movie is. So I went on Facebook and I posted that quote, rape her gently. And one of the managers of my work decided to leave me a very lengthy and mean and nasty uh, attack on me on my birthday. And then she told the, like, district manager of my work about it and put in a like an official complaint against me and i thought i'm i'm getting talked to by the store manager the regional manager the district manager because of this horrible movie how horrible is the film it's ruining my life it's a bad movie rape her gently this is really bad but she she just took great offense to it and what the thing that i remember her saying was rape is never funny and she kept yeah. saying that over and over again. She she was just so offended that I would find it funny. And it's just, I, I don't find rape funny. I find this stupid movie funny for using mm-hmm. rape in this way. And it, it just, oh, I, I hate people. I think that's, I hate people. Yeah, I, I really ha- can never stand that attitude over anything. You know, I... Humor comes from tragedy. It's always been like that. There are so many overly sensitive people in the world. Uh Uh-huh. Very. It's just... The the, the poster of the movie, Ape, specifically says, Ten tons of animal fury leaps from the screen. (laughs) Did you feel the ten tons of animal fury leapt from the screen at you in this this film? Uh, I did not. I did not feel that at all. I felt a guy in a suit. That's about it. <laughs> and then the poster lists all the things that he does. And the first one is, see a defy the jaws of great shark. And jaws is mm-hmm. in caps so that you know that they're talking about the actual jaws, jaws. Right. Uh, demolish a ocean liner. Vanquish monster reptile. Honestly, the monster reptile is a what seems like either a dead snake or a toy snake, and it lasts about 15 seconds of the movie. And yeah. because it's a 3D movie, of course, he throws it at the camera. I love this movie. Well, with so this is bad. This yeah, with this bad as this movie is, it is. Wildly entertaining. It's amazing. It's not stop entertaining. Yeah. But it is just a continuous stream of what the fuckness. Yeah. It it is such an amazing movie. And I'm so happy that this movie is finally available on the internet for people to see your jaw will drop. Because we have spent such a long time talking about how bad this movie is, it's worse than whatever we can say. We could stay. You here. might want to make it your uh, your 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 Christmas movie blog. I am definitely going to put this on my blog. I'm I'm hoping because I've got this blog where I can do wherever I want. I can do whatever. I I'm going to start as much as I can because there are certain films that I can't. But I'm going to start f- putting information on my blog and by the time this comes out hopefully this will actually be happening but whatever movie we're talking about this week just go to my blog reverendsteve.blogspot.com and you can find out more information about the film find out some some facts and useless trivia whatnot about the film that we're talking about and you can uh, maybe see the movie definitely not that for would be totally the ages awesome. but yeah. Rock of Ages has quickly gone from the movie that's going to save summer to five dollars at Walmart. So, yes, <laughs> I bought it for five dollars, and I felt so sad. I felt so sad that I bought it for five dollars. But definitely, if we're talking about a movie, huh? 
I don't know what we got it for. We probably got it for Top Whack because it was probably a new release at that time. Yeah. No, I waited. I waited. I've got three kids, so I'm <laughs> I'm as I'm as budget as you can get. Yeah. But yeah, go to my blog. Probably right now, you'll be able to see uh, the movie. It's amazing. God is just so amazing. There's a there's even a Donkey Kong sort of scene where the ape uh, smashes a factory and for no reason starts throwing flaming barrels all over the place. There's a lot of things <laughs> thrown into the camera in this film. It's like camera throwing the movie in 3D. Joanna Kearns was looking quite hot in some in some shots. It, as well. Huh? This has to be one of the first films she's done, if not the first oh, film God, she did. Yeah. Because, it, yeah, she looks pretty okay in this movie. She looks pretty good. Yeah. I was impressed with her. But what oh, was man. up with that other dude? And and I know I, I've seen that other guy's face no, and other things as well. I looked but, you him know. up. I looked him up on IMDb. He is known for doing a bunch of um, soap operas. Really? Like The Young and the Restless and stuff like that. I mean, how did he find himself a blue denim safari sports jacket? <laughs> His outfit was awesome. <laughs> that was that was a pretty pimp outfit that he was wearing in that movie. That was could have used amazing. maybe a few more pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he played a uh, Tom Rose. That was his character. Yeah. Rose Joanna, journalist. Joanna Kearns. I love the when she first shows up, when she's first seen. She's such a big deal. Her character, Marilyn Baker, is such a big deal that she's having like a yeah. like a press conference there on the steps of some horrible, ugly looking airport. But she's definitely yeah. wearing like a massive pair of seventy sunglasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love that. Oh, and I love the colonel, the the angry colonel who is always on the phone. Yeah. Yelling at someone he and yelling at his me assistant. Of, he kind of reminded me of Eddie Albert, his face, for some reason. So every time he was yeah. on screen, I was just kind of hearing, dun 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 Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. And yeah, nothing made him happy. Yeah, nothing made him happy. And he says that <laughs> line uh, uh, where finally the government has decided to... Kill that hairy son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> General Park and the Korean government have issued orders to kill that hairy son of a bitch. <laughs> oh God, this is this is a this is a perfect midnight movie. I don't know why. I would love to see that actually see that actually written on the orders. Like, he throws the orders down, they take a shot of it, and it literally says, kill that kill hairy, that hairy son, of son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you've ever, this is a perfect movie for all of those people out there who ever wanted to learn more about South Korean culture and about how to gently rape someone and have ever had maybe a strange fetish for men in wet gorilla suits wrestling dead sharks. I mean, I'm sure that that's a Japanese fetish website somewhere. So this yeah, is the movie. Been. If you like men from yeah, the seventies and if you like men from the seventies in denim outfits, this is the film. I'm sure that's a Japanese. You might want to search Kyoto Temple Rape. Yeah, yes. Japanese website. Boom, <laughs> right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this movie. This is definitely a movie to see. Yeah, definitely. If you're, if you're a fan of movies, you've got to check something like this out. Yeah, And definitely. given the figure that to, the finger to the camera, that just totally made that movie for me. Oh God, I I I need to get that as a shirt of just <laughs> ape flipping 
off the camera. I'd wear that everywhere. That would be my favorite shirt. That was definitely the all better off for this movie now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, from here on out, there are no rules. The only thing that could have could have made it bigger, better, is if the eight started fighting a giant Victor Mature. <laughs> a giant Victor Mature. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. And maybe a musical number about how his dad abandoned him. That would have been exactly. nice too. <laughs> yeah. Of course, if you're talking about musical numbers, and nothing beats uh, uh, the band Arsenal. They're Arsenal, amazing. oh, yeah. Stacey Jacks is incredible. You know, I saw him playing that, the bourbon. That's so. Stacey Jacks, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is just so cool. That's the thing. Yeah. He, he's just so... Everything about him. Yeah. His weird <laughs> Sharpie tattoos, his... The fact that he's three foot five. The fact that he runs in all of his <laughs> movies. Yeah, he's really amazing. So, what, what do you want to pimp this week? What do I want to pimp this week? Well, How about your um, story, time? story time. If anyone has heard this podcast, then they don't necessarily have to go and see one of my story times. You might be frightened to come and see one of my story times, but sure, I do story times every week, every Saturday at eleven o'clock in Norman, Oklahoma. If you if you have children. You should bring them because it's the Andy Kaufman of of children's entertainment. It's a whole bunch of fun. It is a whole bunch of fun. I would also like to promote to this week. I have a sponsor. Um, my sponsor this week is boobs. So if you're going to be staring at something, there, there what's for dinner? <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be staring at something, try boobs. That's that's my ad for this week. Try. Boobs. Boobs. It's what's for dinner. And, also, and it is an advertising I can get behind. Yes. Yes, definitely. I can get I can get between that. <laughs> and okay. also, um yes, be sure and check me out on YouTube. Um just search Reverend Steve or Reverend Steve Galindo. I do a ton of stuff with my kids and it's cute and bizarre and weird and stupid. Good stuff. Excellent. Excellent. Looks like you've been pumping out more episodes of the beer, uh, Root Beer Show lately. A lot of episodes of the Root Beer Show. Yes. I've got uh, a very close personal friend of mine named Steph who's been supplying me with root beer. So I have a sponsor. So that's good. <laughs> and uh, my good. my kids, especially my daughters, um, sometimes drive me insane. So... <laughs> Having them do their own episodes of the Root Beer Show is a good way to um, dope them up and make them escape yeah. my hair for a while. So, yes, I'm a big fan of, of uh, my webisode, the Root Beer Show. Be sure and check it out on YouTube. I review root beers with my kids, and it's weird. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely something to check out, yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, this week I just want, I think I want to pimp the other show, Dying Generation, which I, I do with, uh, friend and fellow filmmaker Steve Norfolk. That's an awesome uh, podcast. Where we talk about, it is a lot more free form. We don't have any kind of set, set topic. Uh, it's really about people getting off our damn lawn. <laughs> it's about yeah. getting old. It's about breaking down. It's how the world changes. And this world has changed so much, and it's getting weirder by the day. You know, things like that that we discuss, and just anything else that's on our head. Um, check in with Steve Norfolk, find out if he's still living in his car or if he's found an apartment yet, how <laughs> his medication's doing, um, thoughts of suicide, all of that. A lot of good stuff. It's, it's an upbeat, feel-good show. Yes, you should check it out. If you're <laughs> listening to this and... You might have an awkward massage coming to you. But if you're listening to this, then you should definitely check out Dying Generation. And be sure and check out and my band, that? Awkward Massage, which may or may not, awkward. but probably not, be playing in a town near you. 
And that should be do just about do it for this episode. I'm Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve Galindo. Catch you all next week on The Pope on Film. See you next week. <laughs>